So we're going to walk through using the Atom Editor new site to compile SAS. So let's start by firing up a new instance. I'm going to go blank for the purpose of this demo. So that instance is being created. I'm going to open up the manager, wait for that load. So we're going to be using the Atom Editor. So you're going to want to open your Atom Editor and just make sure that you're either going to install the Zesty package or just make sure it's up to date. So there's two. There's a Parsley highlighter and there's a Zesty Atom plugin. Uh, you're going to need the Zesty Atom plugin and the Parsley highlighter will be helpful. Uh, so make sure those are both uh, up to date. It'll let you know inside of Atom. And then on your desktop, you're going to want to create a folder where you're going to store this. So, um, so we're going to open that folder test site and that's where we're going to store our files. So the first thing you want to do in test site is create a zesty JSON. We've got a newer update coming out in the future that you don't have to do this and we'll automate this and also logins. But for now, you have to create a Zesty JSON. When you're in your manager, you're going to go to editor. And in your editor, there's this external editing tab. We're going to copy this and get this started. Um, and now we want to reload uh, Adam here. So you could do command command, let's see what it is, it's been a little while, I think it's command shift P and reload and you'll see this is going to connect now to Zesty. So what it's doing now is it's pulling down all the base files that we're starting off with. Uh, it's going to be the style sheets, uh, there's a couple of scripts in here um, and a couple of the views which is all good and then if you want to jump to Parsley you can change what your file type is down here uh, in Atom. So and we have some less files here and just for example sake uh, we're going to open this up here go to home page get the stage URL see this home page and we'll just do a quick test we'll delete where this image is hit save refresh and that image is gone. Um, now if we want to change less we could just go body background. Let's just try a black background and see what happens with pink text. Refresh and you can see we got pink text and a black background. Um, so that's how you edit less here. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a folder in here that is not part of the main style sheets. I want to compile a setup so I'm going to go find uh, something in SAS. Uh, I don't know if the newest bootstrap for whatever the newest bootstrap is. Let's see. <coughs> so bootstrap 4. Uh, so we're going to download this. Let's see. So that has SCSS. all sorts of files but here's the main SCSS for bootstrap 4 so I'm just going to take this whole folder and I'm going to put it into my test site folder and now when we look over here you'll see when I have bootstrap 4.0 so what's important to note is that scripts style sheets and views are the only folders that are going to sync uh, to zesty so this it doesn't even know about this bootstrap 4 which is nice because you can like maintain packages or frameworks outside um, and what we need to do is compile this from the command line um, so we need a command line tool to compile SCSS uh, so if you have brew brew is a, a it's like a Mac command line where you can install packages I believe it's brew.sh um, if you don't have this, this is a good thing to install. We're going to see what's available for an SCSS compiler, Brew. 
So SCSS compiler root or transpiler. Directory to desktop that test underscore site. All right, and then I'm gonna reinstall SCSS or SAS. And that's updating. find the command to run this while this is installing. Assuming we're just going to run this right here. So basically we want to run this command into a new CSS file. So we're going to create a CSS file CSS. So that says it's pushed up to the cloud instance. We can test that by um, seeing if we could change body, background, green. And let's delete this. So that main CSS file is now on our Zesty instance. We can see that by visiting here. We need to refresh here. Right now our old editor um, does not refresh when something changes, so you need to be careful not to work in both these environments at the same time. But now we see we have a main CSS, right? Um, and let's check to see if we're installed. Still installing. Okay. So let's see if we have Okay, so looks like we have SCSS. Um, so now let's just get bootstrap. We're going to go bootstrap and then SCSS, bootstrap, just to confirm. That looks like that's the file we want to target. So if we look back at the SAS, we see this right here for SCSS. So you're going to find, <coughs> so in our command line, we're going to run. The path, so let's just confirm we're inside of our test site, right? If I go LSLA, you're going to see I have bootstrap 4. So we're going to SAS bootstrap and it's on the SCSS, and that file is called bootstrap.scss. And we're going to save it to style sheets main.css. Run that. So let's just check now. Sometimes you'll catch that little error, um, but we need to check. So I created the map too. I think there's an error creating that map. So we have this whole file here, and we're going to save this. And that's going to be saved up. And let's just check. Well, I guess we can just look here. And now you can see we're running Bootstrap. So we've compiled all Bootstrap, instantly saved to CSS, and sent up. And if we look in our editor now uh, and open up this file, you'll see that everything else compiled is now up on the Zesty instance. So now you're running Bootstrap, which is nice is that there's just a single file in Zesty, um, but you can actually maintain and then start editing and customizing Bootstrap over here separately. Um, from this point, you could also then store this whole entire folder as a Git repository to track changes outside of Zesty as well. Enjoy.